Hi guys, Frank here with Tiny Plastic Spaceman, and in this video series, we're building the Warbringer Nemesis Titan. Okay, so this one has been a long time coming, um, but uh, my buddy that I built the Warlord Titan for um, was super ecstatic to, I think it was a Forge World Open Day, uh, late 2018, um, when they surprise announced a brand new class of Titan for the 28mm scale, uh, 40k and 30k. Uh, games and so of course he got it so congratulations and it's awesome um, it's it's a really much different Titan uh, it's got um, Reaver class uh, arm weapons but the main thing is this massive huge main gun that it's got so the upper uh, body is completely new um, and it has these little support weapons on the sides which are uh, removable, like so. Um, so I've been building it over the last, oh, well, a little bit too long a time, to be honest. Um, but, uh, so I'm gonna be taking some shots of it uh, and kind of talking over things and basically just talk through the whole thing in one video. So just very quickly before we get into the actual building tips and stuff like that, I did do um, a nice, warm, soapy bath for all of these parts that you can see here. Um, lots and lots of washing, and to be honest, it took uh, a couple hours to get through it all. Um, now, a lot of people don't um, find this... Uh, supremely necessary, but I like to do it just because it helps me identify parts, um, things that I should be watching out for. Um, the other thing is that for me, I do think it actually really does help to give these a good wash and a bit of a scrub with a large dishwashing brush with soft bristles because it does remove wax release agents uh, that are usually sprayed into the silicon molds. So if you ever do have that issue, the first thing that people ask online, uh, if, you, if you pose, hey, I'm having a problem with paint sticking to this part, first thing people will ask is, did you wash the part? Uh, and if you say no, then that will be the easy culprit of why there's an issue. So starting with the legs, um, this was pretty straightforward, but the, I think the hardest thing to get right was the, um, the stance that it's going to be in. Because imagine it's going to be, have this gigantic gun uh, sitting on top, of the, uh, on top of the body, on the very top part of the body. Uh, so it's got already going to be very top heavy. So I wanted to give it sort of like, if you've ever shot like a, a big gun, like a shotgun or a hunting rifle, something like that, you want to have like kind of a stiff leg, but not too stiff, not like bolt stiff. Um, so we gave it a, a straight leg at the back and a bent leg here, as you can see at the front. Now this uh, um, waist piece comes off, but you can see where there's a little uh, indentation or this little tab here actually that fits inside this uh, indentation here and that limits how far the torso can move once it's actually set on top. Now you can change the angle of it as much as you like. Um, if you were really skilled or uh, brave you could just sit it on top or just use a bunch of magnets or something like that but this is probably going to be glued in place to be honest. Um, and then this could be magnetized but I don't know. Um, it's a lot smaller Titan than the Warlord but uh, it's probably going to be glued in place. So you can't see it here very well, but in the close-ups, um, I'll show you, there are a series of three millimeter thick brass rods that go through the knees. Um, now these are mainly just for protection to keep things nice and solid um, as much as possible. Holding the hips together is just basically extra thick super glue or CA glue as I like to call it, the cyanoacrylate glue. Um, I used uh, Bob Smith Industries extra thick stuff. It's really good and very strong and 
you can get some uh, accelerator spray for it that's very handy just to speed up the the curing process because it does take a few minutes to cure basically all the knee joints were glued together with medium or thick CA glue and then drilled through with three millimeter thick drill bits and then um, a bit of medium or thin CA glue was poured down into the opening and then very very quickly um, the the brass rods were hammered in place. There's a couple places where there are two millimeter thick brass rods um, so I think that I did those just on the fronts but most of the locations I think you can see here where there's actually four brass rods going into the knee through this upper leg piece and one in the front as well and these pistons here are a separate this lower part of the upper leg is a separate piece to these to this upper piece uh, so those are drilled through as well I believe there's uh, there's at least two rods in there and I think this third piston also has a rod as well now the bottom feet are just glued in place at the moment there are going to be some lower leg pieces that connect through there um, but this is sturdy enough for it to actually um, stand up on its own and hold the weight just fine So here is the upper body and it's got the main weapon in place. I'm going to show that separately um, because these three weapons do come as a set on their own. So I'm going to take those off. Um, now in game, I like to have uh, weapons be able to just pop off with magnets or just friction fit. Um, but uh, in game, that doesn't actually happen. Uh, the super heavy vehicles like this or gigantic titanic uh, uh, models they actually just explode uh, they don't actually lose any weapons or anything like like the all these whatever these are the massive mega bolters whatever they um they just explode the the whole thing so um yeah there's no need to actually i mean you can obviously there's there's places where you can magnetize it you don't have to um but if you wanted to glue it in place and just have it sit there then that's perfectly fine however um we're pretty sure that there's going to be optional weapons that will come out to fit on this. Imagine a gigantic rocket pod or a multi um, orbital, you know, like ground to uh, orbit uh, gun that shoots out into space or whatever. Who knows what they're going to come out with next. Um, but obviously there's going to be extra things here. So we are going to magnetize these and probably a couple of major size magnets here just to make sure it doesn't pop off in place. Uh, from from its place. First of all, let's uh, just talk about the things you can see very easily. Um, the head has magnet holes in it. There is a pivot, sort of a neck for the head, and the head will fit right over that. Um, and there's space for four, I think it's five mil or six mil magnets. I, for some reason, Forge would like to use uh, five mil magnets on a lot of their models. Um, now on the back, there's you can see these five holes that are in the back of the body. There's two here, three here, and on the other side there's a matching set. And what those are for are these things, which are the reloading magazines. So you can see more holes and the more holes there. So these crane sort of things, um, if you uh, are familiar with tank or auto-loading auto artillery pieces in the real world, um, these are basically reloaders for the big gun, which is basically a gigantic revolver that shoots artillery shells, which is amazing. Um, but there's, you can see the shells in there, and I'll show some close-ups of that. Um, and these are really cool. However, like the main gun, these uh, come with in the set with the main gun, so these will be swappable for some future gun that we don't know about just yet. I mean, it's probably been hinted at in the novels and the books and whatever, but suffice to say, um, with the holes in the back of the body there and these holes there, all you have to do is get some magnets that will fit in there, put them in the right polarity and glue them in place. And you can easily swap out these uh, gun reloading platforms or whatever these things are. So um, they will kind of just sit there if you put them in place properly, but you definitely want to have at least 
three or four, or may as well just go uh, with all five magnets there. So that's pretty cool. Um, now I did build all of this in one piece, uh, which means that painting it in the future, uh, when I get to it, will be a little bit more difficult, but um, because it's basically going to be covered, uh, primed with uh, metallic um, primers, and then all of these pieces and some of these pieces here that are exposed, these are going to be actually painted in the uh, Legio Astorum colors. So before getting to the big gun, we've got all of the other guns uh, that come, uh, that you can get for the Nemesis Warbringer. And as I said before, these are the same Reaver class weapons that you can get at, you know, for your normal Reaver. Um, I think there is a little bit of a difference with the, I think the elbow piece um, for this. I think this is the smaller of the vo Volcano Cannons. It's not the Bellicosa, it's the I think it's a another something volcano cannon, um, and then there's this one, which is I think is the turbo laser. I'm not sure, but basically this is the you might recognize that as the shoulder weapon. This is the carapace weapon that goes on the war uh, on the warlord. So I get them all mixed up, um, and that's another weapon. And then we have the massive Melta gun, or Melta cannon, I don't, I'm not sure what it's called. That's what it looks like without the massive shroud on the outside. So I'm going to paint that and then paint the, the shroud pieces. And you can see these are a little bit different resin as well, it's interesting. A lot of people um, will talk about the colors of the resin uh, of the Forge World stuff. And then we have the Gatling cannon. I think is what this is. It's not the macro Gatling. It's certainly not a micro Gatling, but uh, anyway, um, <laughs> the Warlord has an, a, a, an upsized equivalent to this thing, but anyway, there is the Reaver class weapon. And of course we have also all of the accessory parts like the pipes and the hoses and all sorts of things like that. They're going to be uh, glued and detailed on the various weapons and the legs and all sorts of things like that. There's the head, which comes, I think this is, uh, this just comes in the kit if I remember right. Um, but you can fit, if you really want to, you can fit the Warlord head on it, but I don't, it's a little bit too big for me. These are the lower leg pieces and the leg armor plates that go basically on the legs. So there's all the different ones. For example, here you have the, uh, this is the lower leg piece and these are all labeled as well. They're actually labeled quite nicely. It says out. So this is one of the outer pieces because of just because of the angle that it actually sits at. And there's inner and front and rear as well. And here's all the armor plates. So in the lower part of the bag are the upper pieces of the armor plating, uh, which go surround the gun cupola or gun deck or whatever you want to call it. And then these are the um, these are the shoulder pieces and I think the chest pieces as well of the armor. Okay, and now for the big boy. But first, the support weapons. These are apparently, in the game, these are really, really nice, uh, very powerful anti-air. You can see that there's they're quad guns, and again, you can magnetize them, thanks to the little holes, and uh, they look quite nice. They have little armor plates on them as well, so that you can add some extra color to the anti-air battery. All right, and finally, here's the big boy the massive gun that is the, I think it's the Quake Cannon is what it's called, and you can actually get this, or it will be available at some point, as an arm weapon for the Warlord. So if you can imagine that, um, instead of it being like on a backpack or on your shoulder or something like that, it's just on your arm. That's kind of an idea of how big the Warlord is. Um, so yeah, this, uh, it's there wasn't too much to go on with it. Um, you can magnetize various things um, to make it uh, fully posable, but most likely because this will be uh, an artillery piece, basically on legs, this will probably just be 
uh, glued to a certain position and left alone, unless it's taken out of the model. Um, but it goes together really nice. There's loads and loads of detail. You can see all of the uh, the revolver sort of revolver. Uh, <laughs> I can't remember the cylinder. Um, uh, and at the back, there's actually even guidance holes for each of the rounds. So pretty cool. Uh, guided munitions, I suppose, is what you'd call it. Um, yeah, so it's uh, very ready. I mean, a lot. There's a lot of comments about it, the gun itself, but uh, I've I've come to you know be used to it. Um, it does look pretty cool, and with that ammo loading magazine system that they've got, it is pretty pretty cool. So there you have it. That is the Nemesis Warbringer Titan from Forge World. Pretty much mostly built. Um, I can say mostly built. Uh, and uh, the next step, obviously, is starting to get some paint on it and gluing in all the, the smaller detail pieces. So you can watch me do that live on Twitch. Just search for Tiny Plastic Spaceman, all one word on Twitch. You can check out the link in the video description below. Um, or just search, make sure you follow and subscribe if you can. And um, also, uh, you know, there'll be a video series featuring the Nemesis Warbringer as well. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to check out uh, the Instagram page, TPS Painting Studio, tinyplasticspaceman.com. And remember to hit that subscribe button just below. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next video.